Our flipped classroom means that students have to do preparatory work before they come into the classroom. And then the whole time with faculty is spent on solving problems. In a lot of other, other environments, you have lectures followed by lectures followed by lectures. So it may be a lecture in anatomy and then biochemistry and physiology and, and so on. And, it, and they may not seem um, logical or together or congruent. And, and so we sort of upset the apple cart here. And I don't, I don't want to say it's upset, but we tr we're trying to really go from patient down and, and making everything integrated and really clinically relevant and patient-centered from the first semester. We know as medical educators that about 50% of what students learn in medical school will be obsolete at some point during their practice, 50%. We just don't know which half or we wouldn't teach that half, right? So we know that that doesn't mean that the, the information will decrease because we know that the information in medicine is doubling about every 80 days, eight zero, right? So what that means is half of what we're teaching will be obsolete, but we're gonna to continue to gain more and more information and students and practicing physicians have to be able to assimilate that information. So the best thing that we could do for students in medical school is teach them how to learn. We do a lot of like clinical based cases and I think that really puts it well together for me because it, you can look at the material and be like, okay, like these drugs and like these are the symptoms, but you just, it's kind of just out there. But then when you really bring in like a good clinical case and you're like, okay, like this is important why we're learning like pharma, like dynamics type of thing. It, like when it comes down to like, you have a real patient, a real person who's gonna present and this is why you need to know the basics behind that. It's much harder to learn how to learn, right? It's like planting little hooks in your brain and then hanging bits of information on those tendrils. That's what people used to do. Like they'd study biochemistry and they'd study microbiology and occasionally those tendrils would intersect and people would have an aha moment, right? We don't want to do that. We teach in an integrated way, so a tapestry is built all along, so that when one of those pieces of data change, you know, that te those tendrils, they don't lose the whole bit of information, they still have the tapestry. In the classroom, there won't be one faculty, there may be three, there may be four. So you have a clinician, and a pharmacologist, and an anatomist in there, and you might be working through a problem, a story. You know, what do we remember? We remember stories, we remember Oh my goodness! This person had this illness, and this is and and this is the story, and or the patient. You remember your patients, and so you have all the faculty in there, and they're weaving it together, together and integrating it. Why does this bio? Why is this biochemistry meaningful? Why is now? How does the pharmacology relate to the biochemistry and this patient or this case? And this allows us to not teach just one discipline at a time, like biochemistry by itself. We can weave it into physiology and into the clinical presentation of a patient so that you can manage those NBM questions even in your first semester in medical school, which I think is, is pretty noteworthy. So it all makes sense and it's like, okay, I left the classroom and I'm like, I can, I can do a write-up. <laughs> I can do it from beginning to end with interviewing and everything, I can do it.